I'm Marla Noble, and I'm 30 years old. I live around Jordan. I'm really from Carnarvon, but... At age 30, Marlon Noble is just like most guys. I took my bike out today in the Grenoff. My bike died on me. My bike not died on me. I'm not, I'm not happy today. I'm not happy man. <laughs> I love my nickname, boys. I tell you. You know that laugh at this. Um, I evil can evil. <laughs> But Marlon's life has not always been so carefree. At the age of three, he suffered from a bad bout of meningitis that left him mentally impaired. But his disability rarely got him down. Being a part of a large family, Marlon lived a happy childhood. Then, at the age of 19, Marlon's life took a drastic turn for the worse. He was charged with sexual abuse of two girls. Um, and one had an intellectual disability and the other didn't, and they were Aboriginal girls. F I mean, friends of the whole family, friends of the family. From the very beginning, Marlon denied doing anything wrong. But due to his disability, he was deemed unfit to stand trial. That left him in a legal grey area. The courts ruled him ineligible for full-time psychiatric care, but too much of a risk to the community to be released. So, Marlon was jailed indefinitely. I don't like a jail. I don't like it in there. Scary place. You got no families in there. No brothers or sisters to talk to. You ain't your own. You ain't your own. After a full decade behind bars, fresh evidence emerged. Ida Coutois, who'd taken Marlon under her wing after the death of his parents, discovered major holes in the evidence against him. Having spoken just recently to um, the girls and their mother, the mother didn't even know that they were complainants to any charges. And she vehemently says nothing happened and the girls say nothing happened. I'm not guilty. I don't do anything with that girl. I don't. I don't. Nothing with that girl. He accusing me. I'm not guilty. After a series of damning headlines, all charges against Marlon were dropped, and Marlon was released. It was a day he'll never forget. I see that beach. I got out of jail, man. I dive in the water. Top of the water. That's my name on it. I dive in. Ah, oh, beautiful, brother. So, no, lovely sunny day, lovely beach, lovely birds, and you smell a lovely sea. But Marlon's is a strange kind of freedom. Although still never convicted of a crime, he remains under 24 hour supervision. Well, he's got to be with a support worker all the time. He's got to be in line of sight all the time. Um, for someone that hasn't been convicted, why? Why does he have to be in line of sight when you haven't been convicted of anything? I don't think Marlon's guilty at all. Not a hope in hell. He is still seen as a convicted prisoner who committed horrendous crimes and who has an intellectual disability. I'm a free man yet for a little while. I can't walk down the street by myself. I can't down and walk down there by myself. I can't do it. I can't have coffee for myself. I can't have lunch for myself. I mean, wrong. It hurt me. Never convicted, but never fully freed. 
Marlon's case highlights the inequalities that still exist within our legal system for people with disabilities. Ten years in jail without charge is just not on. It's just not on. It's um, absolutely disgusting. Around Australia, um, there are a huge amount of people in exactly the same position as Marlon. People are imprisoned and never been found guilty of a crime. There's not even any compensation for him. Because what they did was lawful. And that's the scariest bit, I think. That that law's still there and it's still happening. And people are still being imprisoned. Indefinitely. <laughs>